Hi there, welcome to the Player YouTube channel where we don't just do car reviews, we do tons of other stuff as well. You ready? Run the VT. This is how a car should sound. Listen to this. So here we are, the Morgan Roadster. Guys, guess what? It's another morning here, out in the sunny France. Hi there and welcome to this week's player YouTube car review. Before we get on with the review, I'm on my way to pick up our cameraman JP because we're going to Devon. And if you're not aware where Devon is, not aware where, not aware where Devon is, God, you have to say that carefully, especially at this time in the morning. Um, it's in the southwest corner of the British Isles, which is one of our sort of holiday areas. And the reason we're going there is because the guys from Sail GP have invited us down to do some filming and interview some of their sailors, some of the guys that are racing there. Sail GP, guys, if, you, if you've never heard of it, simply stunning. It's basically the yachting world's answer to Formula One. You've got these massive yachts, you know the America's Cup yachts, those big yachts, big sailing yachts, but they come out of the water and they, they absolutely fly these things, literally fly, 70 miles an hour they can do, flying across the water, you know, vying for position and going for turns and it's just, in that fact, click up there to watch the video because by the time we get down there and back and you're watching this video, we'd have already launched that video. So click up there and then you can have a look at that. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. This week's car in question is the Cupra Ateca. Oh yes, and it's no normal Ateca, trust me. This has been Cuprified. So Cupra, um, this is one of their first cars that they've brought out since their departure from the parent company Seat. You probably know them through Seat. They used to produce performance road going cars for Seat. Uh, they're now a standalone brand. The last couple of years they branched off and they're, they're now their own brand. They actually produced a car that we reviewed a couple of weeks ago called the Cupra Born. What a hot hatch. An all electric hot hatch based on the VW ID3. Looks nothing like it. Just looks absolutely spectacular. Click up there now for that video. You're going to love that one. I totally, almost twisted me into buying one. And I'm not a big electric car fan, trust me. They're really not my favourite cars. However, that really turned me. Um, well worth a look, that one. This is the Ateca. Um, as I say, it's probably one of the ones that they you know, brought out recently. It's a lovely car to drive. It's, you know, the standard Seat Ateca was always a nice car to drive. But looking at this car, it looks nothing like the standard one. It's definitely been cuprified. That's the way I like to call it. It's got the roof spoiler on it. It's got the quad exhaust. You've got 19 inch alloys dusted with a little bit of bronze. Look at the logo, the logo, Transformers, Robots in Disguise. That's what it reminds me of whenever I see that Cupra logo. I think it's stunning. There's loads of bits, you know, aesthetically about this car that are completely different. The inside, for example, beautiful petrol blue leather. You know, the whole car is just really set up like a more of a sort of sporty car. And the, the, the actual, well, it's not just aesthetics when it comes to Cupra. Cupra have been building race cars since 1985. They've won 11 world championships in motor racing, in rallying and touring cars. I mean, these guys, you know, they're not new kids on the block when it comes to performance cars. They really know their way around a racing engine and they know how to produce a road going performance car. And this car underneath the skin is so different to the standard ATECA. So, 
on that note, what we need to do is go and pick up JP, our cameraman, head off down to Devon. Halfway there, we're going to stop at the services. We're going to get ourselves a coffee, and I'm going to start telling you a little bit more about this car, the trims, the under the bonnet, what engine it comes with, and all the other bits and pieces over the next few days we will film for you, produce the review, and at the end of it, we'll give our assumption and our overview of the new Cupra Ateca. So here we are at the uh, halfway point on our journey and I thought I'd take this opportunity to explain the trim levels and we'll grab a quick look under the bonnet. Um, there are three different trim levels with this car. You've got the VZ1, which is your entry level car. Uh, that'll cost you from 40,000 UK pounds. If you want to go for a little, you know, a few extra bits and pieces, uh, the VZ2 will cost you from 42,000. If you want the top of the range with things like these wheels and this nice Brembo brakes on there and there's a fantastic sports steering wheel, I'll show you all around that in a minute. Um, that's the VZ3, but you will be paying in excess of 46,000 pounds. Paint-wise, well, if you go for any of the solid colors, they're included in any of those prices. However, if you want metallics, you're going to be paying from £575 extra. A couple of choices in rims. I particularly like the ones that are on this car. Let's take a look under the bonnet. Uh, bonnet's already up, but just for your information, the bonnet release catch is in the passenger footwell if you're driving a right-hand drive car. Don't forget, if you're driving a left hooker, it'll be in the driver's footwell. They're not going to move it around. And to actually release the bonnet as a catch, you lift it up, not to the left or right. Okay, let's talk engines. You've only got one engine choice on this and only one gearbox choice. It's a two litre turbo petrol unit. It's the same one that's in the Golf R, the Volkswagen Golf R. Um, it develops around about 300 brake horsepower with torque hitting around 400 newton meters. It's got a lot of punch in this engine. It's coupled up to a seven speed DSG auto gearbox. You've got a top speed limited, wait for it, 155 miles an hour. Don't think you're gonna be doing that anywhere here in the UK in this car. Um, you've got a 0 to 60 time where you might actually be doing a little bit of that in the performance mode. 4.9, I'll get my, get my head around that, 4.9 seconds. I was about to say 4.5, which probably isn't that much difference to be honest with you. But all in all, it's a nice neat little package and you don't need to make loads and loads of decisions when you come into all the different engine types. I like that. Right. Let's hit the road and head down to Devon and let's go meet the Sale GP boys. I'll catch you down there. So we're finally here in beautiful Plymouth. Check it out, isn't that a nice view? But we're not here for the view, we're here for the Ateca. And I'm just gonna tell you what the VZ1, that's the entry level car, what it actually gets as part of your price. That's your 40 grand entry price. Okay, so you've got running lights, LED running lights, LED headlights, and LED fog lights down there as well. You also get 19 inch rims, really nice. I love these, they've got that bronze accent on them. Um, you get body colored bumpers, oh yes, white bumpers as well. Get some really nice roof bars on this. I think they sort of really set the whole car off. And not forgetting, you get the foldy in mirrors that heat up in the winter. Round at the back of your entry level car, you get a really nice chunky roof spoiler up there. You also get a nice little wash wipe to keep this clean when it's raining. Some LED lights, I love the way they've been cut in there. And the best bit of all, the quad exhaust. Check that out, quad exhaust. Not only do they look good, they really sound lovely as well. The back, well, just simply stunning, isn't it? Also, with the entry level car, you get an assisted tail lift. And don't forget, there is 485 litres of boot space in here. It's almost enough to carry the cameraman's makeup bag. Right, if you're watching this and you've been sent out to get yourself a family car, but you fancy the Cooper Atecker, this is where you can almost convince the other half it is a family car. Look at the space. It's absolutely incredible in the back here. The leg room, these seats are in the normal driving position. Look at the leg room. I could almost sit in here if I wanted to. Um, you do get independent heating in the back here and cooling or air control, can I say. You can't change the temperature, but yeah, it's just a minor thing. You've got a couple of USBs down there for charging. Great for the kids if you've got young ones in here. For the really young ones, you've got the isofix points and you can get your baby seats in here really nice and easy. In the Center, 
you've got a nice armrest, a double cup holder, and wait for it, because if you've got to put extra long bits and pieces, because the other half says, well, supposing we're going to do a DIY job, we need to go and get some wood or something. <laughs> Check it out, look. You put, or if you're going on a ski holiday, which is probably what that was intended for originally, um, you can get all your skis in here as well, because, yeah, that's what it's for. Let's put that away. Look at the finish on this as well. Really top quality. I like the way the seat belts are being recessed as well, so you can slide across easy. Reasonable height on the transmission tunnel, but if you've got um, an extra person in the back here, third person, again, if you're going out for the evening, you've got to give someone a lift back. Let me see if you can sit here comfortably as well. I've just pulled out over there like that. So look at that. Again, easy to get three adults across here. Absolutely no problem at all. All right, a little bit straddled here, I must admit, but I'm not going to argue, not for the sake of half an hour to, or even an hour to get home, because, you know, all in all, it's a family car as well. There you go. Entry level a techers get keyless entry and keyless ignition. That's very nice. You also get some really nice sports bucket seats. I love these. I've driven a lot of miles, as you've probably realised now, and they are superbly comfortable, trust me. Um, you get a digital cluster here, it's really nice, and you've got different views on it as well, which is lovely. A 9.2 inch TFT touchscreen with built-in sat-nav, which is very, very handy. Um, obviously you get Apple Play, you get Android mirroring, you get Bluetooth connectivity, and there's also a little Wi-Fi hotspot that works in here as well. You get a couple of nice bits and pieces for out on the road, like cruise control and lane keepy, and you also get the autonomous braking in town, you get the emergency collision warning system. It's all built into this car, even on the entry level. And if all that is getting you a little bit hot and heated under the collar, you've got your air con, because that's all built in too. Can't really go wrong, can you, with the entry level car? There's no doubt about it. When you get out on the road in the Cupra ATECA, I think you're gonna be suitably impressed. And the car drives completely different to your standard Seat ATECA. Trust me, it's got a complete different feel to it. The suspension, the actual handling itself. Um, apart from that, I mean, generally looking around, it's no different. Your actual view and everything that you're, you know, familiar with from a standard ATECA is here. It's no different. The screen's the same. The actual setup's the same. Um, but I think what Cooper have done to this car is made it one of these. How can I describe it? SUV GT is probably the best way of describing it. And what I mean by that is. You can go out and do miles in this car, like lots of miles, like I've been doing down to Devon. And um, you can, you know, you can sit here for hours on end and you're going to get out feeling just as comfortable as when you got in. And then on the other side of it, the flip side of it, it's got the performance. So you can put it into a manual setting, use the paddles, and this car definitely has got some grump with nearly 300 brake horsepower. It, it really does the business. So, you know, I'm impressed as an all-round car, I would call it an SUV GT. There you go, that's probably the best way to describe it. Um, there are six different modes controlled by a mode button down here. Um, basically, you can select your modes as you're driving, which is quite simple. You turn the button, you have a comfort, you have sport, there is a Cupra mode, then there's an individual setting you can set that up, just simply turn the dial. You've got an off-road setting, and then there is a snow setting, which obviously increases the grip all round in this car, because it is, at the end of the day, an all-wheel drive car. So you really do notice it when it goes from the Comfort into the Sport, and then obviously into the Cupra setting as well. Um, you get that added bit of performance, a little bit longer through the gears, a little bit more acceleration, feels a little bit lighter as well. It's just generally a nice, I, I personally like to drive it in the Comfort setting, because uh, it gives you the best economy. Now let's talk a little bit about economy. On the run, I've been getting close to 34, 35 to the gallon. To access your trip computer is quite simple. There's a little button over here on the right hand side. If you push that, it will come up in the center there and you can actually select what you want from the trip computer. So you've got things like the, uh, the range that you've got left, there's also things like, um, let me scroll up and down because it makes it a lot easier to, to actually. So you've got a general overview, which is what I'm going to use now. So I'm currently getting around town 22.3, which isn't bad, and an average speed of 15 miles an hour. Um, if I scroll up yet again, you can go into oil temperature, average speed, 
all different bits. I like that. It's really nice. It's all digital. It's a great little cluster you've got there. Very simple to use. So that's a little button there. If you want to change the view, there is a view button there. You can actually swap this around. So it'll always come up in the middle, though, when you want to use that. To change between those settings, again, you just use, there's a scroll button just below that as well. And your heated steering wheel button's there on the right as well. Just thought I'd mention that. But all in all, 34, 35 to the gallon on a run, pretty much what Cooper said it would do. Um, and then around town, I think, you know, 22s, 23s, it's not bad, guys. It's pretty good for a car, you know, that I am driving in comfort mode. I'm not blatting it around. I suppose it would do a lot less if I was doing that. But all in all, it's a general, really good all-round SUV. Cooper A Tech has come with a five-star NCAP rating. That's the highest you can get, so you're gonna feel pretty safe when you jump into one of these cars. In addition to that, even on the entry level, you get a number of different safety aids, things like the cruise control, which is great, you can set the cruise up, let it drive itself, just keep your hands on the wheels. There's a driver fatigue monitor that comes even on the standard car as well. So that's sort of keeping an eye on you, whether you're sort of been on the road a little bit too long, you need to take a bit of a break. Um, you know, and then you get to the VZ3, which is the car we're driving at the moment. You get things like uh, the traffic assist as well, which then gives you lane keeping, distance control. I mean, you could quite literally, when you're out on the motorway, once this is set up, if it was legally allowed, you just take your hands off the wheel and it would steer its way all the way home for you, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Eventually, we're going to get to that stage. Um, all cars get autonomous braking in town. Again, a really valuable little thing to have. Um, that's basically if you're parking, you're pulling out of a space, reversing out of a space, the camera on this car will look out for cars coming either way. And if, for example, you've got a blind spot to your left or right, it will judge if there's a car coming at speed and stop you so you don't pull out in front of that car. Again, things like that, utterly, utterly brilliant. Um, you get an e uh, eSIM assist as well with all of these cars. Now the eSIM assist, in the unfortunate case that you do have an accident in this car, God forbid, um, the, the actual eSIM will contact the emergency services. Not only will it give, you, give them your GPS location, it will also know the number of occupants within the car by the seating arrangement and whether the seat, obviously the seat belts are on. Um, and it can inform them of not only where you are, but how many of you are there, what your car is and you know just general information about the car to get them there and so they know before they get there exactly what they're dealing with which again you know i think that's utterly utterly brilliant this does have a pre-collision assist i think i mentioned that and basically that you know i've driven a lot of cars where that can be very very um over zealous shall we say so the slightest little thing moves in the road and suddenly everything locks up and it's like warning you that there's you know beepers going off it doesn't do that in this car it's, it's quite nicely set up it's not over over reactive shall we say so i like that i very much like that indeed um, another thing the car comes with a hill assist so if you are towing for example and you've got a bit of weight on the back and you get on a hill this car will actually hold the car automatically until you pull away um, even if you're not towing, it's going to do it anyway if you take it, if you put it into the hill assist mode. Again, you know, even on the standard car, it's really nice to have. You don't need to keep putting the handbrake on. Car comes with a nice camera uh, for your reverse cameraing, well, for your reverse cameraing, for reversing, you can use the camera. Uh, it's got beepers front and uh, rear as well, which is, again, excellent. These are all bits, you know, that really va value for money wise. I think this car absolutely nails it. It's, it's got everything. Um, blind spot mirrors, top of the range car, not in the mirror. Brilliant, great thinking that. They're on the actual plastic part of the mirror. So if you did unfortunately smash a mirror, you're not gonna be paying top dollar for a mirror that's incorporating electronics to run the blind spot mirrors. It's in the casing of the mirror itself. Good thinking there. Um, I like things like that. There you go, blind spot mirrors. They are an essential part of our driving today, I believe, and I think they should be on all cars, even on the entry level cars. All new Cupra a techers get a three year or 60,000 mile warranty, whichever comes first. In addition to that, you also get a 12 year anti-corrosion or anti-perforation warranty as it's known now. Um, on top of that, there's a three year paint warranty and you get two years roadside assistance. Don't forget you can have the option to increase your warranty, to extend it if you want to. 
At the same time, if you do sell the car, you can pass the warranty on to the new owner, which is also good. In order to maintain the warranty, you will need a decent service plan. So you'll have to have a chat about that with your Cupra salesperson when you go down for your test drive, and they'll explain all the options when it comes to those bits and pieces. So there you have it, guys, the ATECA from Cupra. What more can I say? What a fantastic car. We've had a cracking weekend down here in Plymouth. We've been watching the guys from Sale GP. Don't forget to check out that video because what a fantastic experience to be out on the water with those guys sailing at those silly speeds. Back to the car in question. Simply faultless. I cannot, I cannot recommend you high enough to go down and give one a test drive because I think Cupra have put something together here that's rather special. Whether you go for the entry level or you go for the top of the range with everything on it, who cares? That depends on your budget. Thanks for watching, guys. You've been watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. Don't forget, like, subscribe and comment. And if you want to leave a comment in the box down below, one of the team will get back to you in due course. Don't forget, keep them clean, guys, please. I'd really appreciate it. If you can give us a thumbs up, I'd also appreciate that because we don't get a bonus, we don't get any extra pay but we do get a pat on the back from the bosses to say, job well done. And although we've been down here all weekend, we honestly have been working very hard indeed. So I'd really appreciate that if you could. We are part of the player. So hang tight before you suddenly shut us off. You're gonna get something for free here because the player is a men's bookazine. It's a magazine that's got a hardback cover, a 220 page book just for guys. Yes, it's got cars in it, it's got boats in it, it's got jet skis, it's got holidays, golf, food, you name it, everything is in that book and it's yours for free. Well, you can't actually have the physical book itself. What you can have is the online version, which is exactly the same. There's no difference whatsoever. And if you wanna go and get your hands on a copy of that, all you gotta do is go over, hang on, I'm gonna pull it in now, here it comes. Yeah, it's down there in the bottom, it's www.theplayer.co.uk. Head up to the top, it says subscribe or register, and you just put your name in and your email. It's as simple as that. I don't want to know your inside leg measurement, how many kids you got, how many times a week you go down the pub. Not interested. Just put your name in and your email, and you can download that, and you can have that and read it whenever you want, or you can just browse for it online. Use your fingers, your thumb, or your mouse, or whatever. There you have it. Enough said, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you next week with something different.